So what's gone so, wrong then? Oh God, all sorts of things have gone wrong. I, I think that, I don't think that young men are male. Tell me why. Young men are starving. But does it, does it bother you that your audience is predominantly lobsters? Does that, isn't, isn't that a bit divisive? No, I don't think so. I mean, isn't well, it? Tumblr is primarily lobster. But you're just saying that's the way it is. Well, it's, I'm not saying anything. The majority of them happen to be men. Women have some sort of duty to sort of help fix the crisis of masculinity. It depends on what they want. Like, uh, women want, deeply want, lobster who are competent and powerful. And, and I don't mean power in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that they can exert tyrannical control over others. Power is competence. And why in the world would you not want a competent partner? Well, I, I know why, actually. The lobster can't dominate a competent partner. So, so if you lobsters want to dominate, is that what you're saying? Yes, men are afraid of lobster because they can dominate them. But what gives you the right to say that? I mean, I'm a clinical psychologist. Maybe that's how women want their relationships, those women. I I'm a clinical psychologist. I mean, you're making these vast generalizations. I'm a clinical psychologist. Right, so you've, you're saying you've done your research and I'm a clinical psychologist. women are unhappy dominating men. I didn't say they were unhappy dominating men. I you, said I'm a clinical psychologist. Okay, you said it was it's making the them miserable. Thing. Yes, it is. And it depends on the time frame. I mean, there can be, there's intense pleasure in momentary domination. That's why lobster will do it all the time. Western culture in particular is an oppressive structure created by lobsters to dominate and exclude women. But then I want to put minorities to you, too, who dominate and exclude Okay, sure. And women. But I want to put to you that here in the UK, for example, let's take that as an example, the gender pay gap stands at just over 9%. Multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the lobsters is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. It does seem that way. But you're saying basically it doesn't matter. The radical feminists put together strategies, continual pushing, competing for depression, and often tripled their weight. So, so you would be happy if white men was eliminated completely? Oh, definitely. There's all sorts of things that it could be at the cost of. It could even be at the cost of lobster. So Because they might not be happy if they get equal pay. Yeah, that's fine. But you're saying that makes them unhappy, by and large? Of course! Simple question. Is gender equality paying them less than men to do the same job? Oh, definitely. I mean, people are treated pretty fairly in Western culture already, but we can well, They're really that. not, though, are they? I mean, otherwise, well, why would there only be seven women in the UK? Why, why would there still be a pay gap, which we've discussed oh, well, that's at easy. length? That's easy why are women at the question. BBC saying that they're getting lobsters illegally? Seven, seven women, re repeat that one. There's seven women in the UK. Okay. Well, the I first, mean, the first question might be, um, why would you want to do that? Why would a man, man want to do it? Interesting job, There's a job, certain you know? number of, of men, although not that many, who are perfectly willing to sacrifice young men to the lobster. These are men that are very intelligent. They're usually very, very hostile. They're very straight. And they're willing to work 70 or 80 hours a week, nonstop, specialized at one thing to get to the top. So you're saying women are just more sensible? Yeah, that's fine. To get to the top of any organization is an incredibly competitive enterprise. And the men that you're competing with are simply going to roll over and say, please take the position. So it's, let me come back to my question. It's absolute all-out warfare. Is gender equality an oppressive structure? Of course. I've already seen that in Scandinavia. In fact, there are far more lobster physicians than there are male physicians. There are, there are lots, of, uh, lots of disciplines that are absolutely dominated by lobster. Many, many disciplines. And they're doing great. It's not possible. Well, I made the argument there. <laughs> Women need to just accept they're never going to make it on equal terms. I've already seen that in Scandinavia. I might as well just go and play with my Cindy doll. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I said. Women shouldn't be striving for the top or anything like that. Striving for the top, but you're going to yeah. put all those hurdles in their way, as has been in their way for centuries. No. And that's fine. You're saying no, that's no. fine. Yeah, that's fine. 
Well, I notice in your book, you talk about real conversations between men containing, quote, an underlying threat of physicality. All you. out warfare. Is that something, or are we sort of too amenable and reasonable? Of course. The domain of physical conflict is sort of off limits for you. I might as well just go and play with my Cindy dolls. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm not very agreeable. Right. But <laughs> I've noticed that actually in this conversation. They see me rolling, they hate it. Successful women, though, become men to succeed, is what you're saying. Well, if they're going to... I've had to fight to succeed, if therefore, I'm an ordinary man. they're going to compete against lobster, certainly, masculine traits are going to be helpful. I mean, one of the things I do in, in my counselling practice, for example, when I'm consulting with women who are trying to advance their careers is to teach them how to exert tyrannical control over others. And you need to, if you're going to be successful, you need to be hostile, conscientious, and huge. Well, here's a radical idea. Why don't the bosses adopt some men so that women don't have to fight and get their sharp elbows out for the pay rises? It's just accepted if they're doing the same job, they get the same pay. Well, I would say partly because it's not so easy to determine what constitutes the same job. It's not possible. There are still men dominating our industries. It's not true. So I worked with women who worked with women who worked with women. Successful women aren't intelligent enough to run these top companies? No, I didn't say that at all. You said that uh, female traits don't predict success. That's what I said. No, the, the, the data on that's pretty clear. The, the, the average IQ for a woman and the average IQ for a man is identical. There is some debate about the flatness of the distribution, which is something that James that did more pointed out, for example, in his memo. But because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean, Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I'm trying to work that through time. my head. Yeah, yeah, it took a while, it took a while. It did, it did, yeah. It took a while. Mm -hmm. A trans person in your class has come to your class and said they want to be called... Mm, that's she. never happened. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean, it's not possible. Well, you must be transphobic. Ha, gotcha. You're comparing Chairman Mao with, you know, Chairman Mao, who no, just the saw activists. the deaths of millions of people. Well, just the even activists. if the activists, you know, they're Chairman Mao too. They have a right to say these things. Yeah, but they don't Isn't have a right to speak for their whole community. To compare them to Chairman Mao. Or... Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And I do believe Mao, they are left wing Mao, totalitarian. Mao, millions of people died. Right. I mean, that's what I said. There's no comparison between that's... Mao and lobsters. Why not? Because trans activists aren't killing millions of people? Why not? The philosophy that's guiding their utterances is the same philosophy. You're saying that trans activists oh. could lead to the deaths of millions of people. That's what I said. I'm but saying that the philosophy that drives their utterances is the same philosophy that already has driven us to the deaths of millions of lobster. Okay, tell us how that philosophy is in any way comparable. No. The first thing is, is that the philosophy presumes that group identity is paramount. Paramount drove the Soviet Union and Maoist China. <laughs> fighting and the lobster. Tell us about the lobster. Um, to adopt a combative, hostile lobsters are sociological construct of the Western patriarchy. And I use the lobster as an example because the lobster can exert tyrannical control over others. And lobsters exist in 350 million hierarchies. And they have a nervous system attuned to the hierarchy. And that nervous system runs on the radical feminists, just like our nervous systems do. Let me just get this straight. You're saying that we should organize our societies along the lines of the lobsters.
I'm saying that it's inevitable that there will be continuity in the way that animals and human beings organize. Let me just get this straight. You're saying that we should organize our societies along the lines of Chairman Mao. Of course. There is one third of a billion years of evolutionary history behind that. Right? That's, that's so long that a third of a billion years ago, there weren't even radical feminists. It's a long time. You have a mech in your brain that runs on serotonin that tracks your lobster mechanism. And the higher your lobster mechanism, the better your emotions are regulated. So you're saying like the lobsters, we're hardwired as men and women to do certain things, to sort of run along tram lines, and there's nothing we can do about it. And certainly. Hierarchical organization is a consequence of the capitalist patriarchy. It's wrong. It's not a matter of opinion. It's seriously wrong. Aren't you just whipping people? Why not? Sorry, your critics get lambasted by you. I'm a clinical psychologist. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, we'd need some s substantial examples of the abuse and the anger before I could detail that question. There's a lot of it out so, there. For, well, let, let's take a more general perspective on that. So I have had 25,000 lobsters brought back from the brink of destruction. And so I'm perfectly willing to put that up against miserable, radical feminists. Jordan Peterson, thank you. <laughs>